Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to Hobby Homies. My name's Shane. Today we're going to be doing a read through of a new, new to me, war game called Necropolis. Uh, this game was brought to my attention by one of the homies in the Discord, Numa. Thank you. Uh, this game looks absolutely incredible and I can't wait to uh, sort of sink my teeth into it and have a, have a bit of a go. So Necropolis, uh, a narrative diorama skirmish game. The age of the living ended long ago, only the dead remain. Liches chase the ambitions of Eon, Eon's past, revenants wage war over crumbling cities, and the broken undead flock to find meaning in the service of these dark lords. Channel your magic and muster your minions for the treasures of the endless city await. So very, very cool straight away. A nice, nice good chunk of lore there. Um, enough to yeah, give you a bit of an idea what's going on. So. Um, Necropolis is a narrative skirmish game set in a dark fantasy world. All life as we know it has vanished and the land is populated by only by those who, whether by intent or curse, have overcome the laws of time and morality. Um, this is a bit of a, this is a PDF at the moment. Uh, there's a Discord server which I'll put links in there where you can find the rules. Um, I'm more, I'm definitely old school when it comes to paper, but um, today we're going to be just flicking through on this chunk thing tablet um, <laughs> um yeah so basically i'm just going to read through most of most of the book here i feel like uh and then maybe interject and talk about a few very things that i'm very interested in i've only sort of barely glanced through it um but uh it's already looking uh very very good so the game is played with only a handful of miniatures within a compact 16 by 16 play area it's focused on quick play brutal combat and game-changing spells. Players will create gatherings of unique miniatures, set up a battlefield and take turns activating miniatures and utilizing action points to roll 10-sided dice, cast spells and achieve objectives in order to secure victory. Gatherings will change from game to game via a system of ambitions, which are side quests you choose to pursue in-game, allowing your miniatures to become stronger, learn new magic or suffer debilitating injuries or maladies. Uh, very cool. I love those kind of things where it's like um, persists, you know, through it on, ongoing, ongoing effects and stuff like that through a campaign. So you will need a 16 by 16 board or space to play on, around, around two to six miniatures uh, of an undead-ish variety, a smattering of terrain elements, a handful of 10-sided dice, and some tokens to represent dropped mana and objectives. So from what I've gathered, there's three different kinds of mana, um, blood, bone, and plasm, I think. Uh, we'll... we'll We'll get there in it later on. So it's kind of cool too. Like I've been creating some other tokens for like ranges. So if you're into that kind of thing, creating mana tokens and stuff like that could be pretty fun as well. Uh, key game ideas. Everything and everyone is un slash dead. <laughs> I guess dead or undead. Uh, leaders are necromancers, lich, whites. Minions are zombies, skeletons, ghasts, and there's some beasties as well. Alternating activations. Yes, thank you. Love alternating activations. Action points can be spent on actions each time you activate a model. Narrative campaign focus, always progressing in some way due to the ambition system which will work as which work both as side objectives and experience. There are no misses or failures, only lesser successes. Again, that is such a cool idea. Um, yeah, love, love that, love that. Mana based spell casting divided by blood, bone, plasm. All models have one of these keywords as well and these will interact. Each point of mana is a dice, but you can choose how many to roll when casting, taking the highest result, but these dice are gone for the rest of the game. Wow, okay, cool, that's big. Um, when a unit goes out of action, it leaves a mana token of its, of its type, either blood, bone, or plasm, to, and these can be consumed to gain mana. Nice, so it's kind of like Diablo, when you slay an enemy, you can pick up the, uh, pick up the items or the orbs or the energy that's left behind, I like that. Small board size, 16 by 16, to encourage making mini dioramas to play on. Again, awesome. I've always been um, a fan of really well detailed uh, boards, but they're generally, to be well detailed, they're, they're static. You know, they're not really modular or, you know, there's no customizing available. So um, being able to make something 16 by 16, it's quite small, so you'll be able to make a, a, you know, a bunch of these and, and have all sorts of different ones. Um, and I mean, I'm sure there's modular uh, options available as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's cool. I like that. Co-op and solo scenarios baked into the campaign. Awesome. Love it. Base sizes are just suggestions. You do you. Rule of cool is always correct. Awesome. 
love that too. Um, so there's an awesome map here. So there's already a fair bit of lore involved in here. Um, I'll put this up here. Um, very cool. Very, very cool. The endless city and surrounding lands. Um, oh, there's the lore. We will, do we read the lore? It's a page of lore. Let's do it. The age of the living ended long ago. Only the dead remain. The ensorcelled ruins of the endless city just jut from the ashen remains of the world like bones from a dry lake bed. Here the undead gather, skeletal thralls, rotting acolytes, and wailing spirits, inheritors of this lifeless place. But the city is not without lords. Claim progenitor of necromancy, with their Khan born faithful, dedicated to recover the knowledge of ages gone. The rotten goddess, not seen for centuries, holding a crumbling court of embalmers and flesh sewers. The doomed child, an unseen trickster commanding a swathe of treacherous ghasts. Against the mighty mighty against the mighty towers of these grand lich gather the innumerable undead seeking purpose in the shadows. Worshippers of root and rot, those bound by fungus and wisp, ancient skeletal monarchs and long dead maleficas, all mingle in the ruined shanties and lairs of the city. To the west, the undying forests of the eternal autumn. To the east, the sunken old marsh and, and all around the shattered remnants of ages gone. Channel your magic, muster your minions for the treasures of the endless city await. Nice, nice. So after a, bit, a nice big chunk of lore there, we come to the, base, the basic rules. All measurements are in inches for tradition's sake and measurements are taken from the model's base. After deployment, which is detailed in scenario below, each leader receives a mana dice, dice of a type and an amount equal to their mana points. E.g. a leader with two blood mana points and two bone mana points would receive two blood mana dice and two bone mana dice. So, okay, straight away, so you could have a handful of different colored dice, you know, maybe like red, white, and blue or something to represent each of the different types of mana. Um, after this, follow the turn order below. Nice, straight, easy turn order, starting with an, an initiative step. So each player rolls a d10 with the highest deem to have won the initiative roll. Uh, second, they come to the gathering step. Starting with a player that won initiative roll, take turns activating single models until all have activated. And the others step. Any NPCs then activate. Each player selects one M NPC and in initiative order, bids any number of mana dice to control them. If both players bid the same amount of mana dice or none at all, control of the NPCs is decided by roll off. Players can keep bidding until they run out of mana dice and any mana dice bid are lost. Cool, okay, that is very cool. So I like the, uh, the bidding aspect there. Um, sort of makes me think like, you know, maybe there's other things happening in the background, you know, um, shadow pup, uh, puppet masters and all that sort of pulling the strings. That's, that's cool there as well. The turn then ends and begins again with, an, with the initiative step. So nice, nice, very concise, very straight up uh, turn order, which is cool. When a model activates, it can spend its action points, also known as AP, to perform actions. Each action has a cost outlined below. Spellcasting also has AP costs and is dealt with in a later section. So but we move through our actions here, our basic actions, I guess you could call them. Um, first is move, like AP of one. Um, you move the model the amount of inches equivalent to which move characteristic. So, you know, pretty, pretty standard. You know, I'm sure we're, we're, most of us are familiar with how a move system works in a, in a, in a war game. Um, you've got, you know, this model has a six inch move. It can move up to six inches. Um, and yeah, so it looks like we also go through um, it's fly it's keywords, like fly to ignore vertical distance. Um, and if they cannot, oh, okay. So climbing vertical surfaces, as long as the model can move to a horizontal ground within their movement distance. If they cannot, they will fall. See below. Um, cool, cool. Models can also move horizontally out from a ledge and then uh, choose to fall at the end of their move action. Uh, it, okay, cool. You can jump, I guess jump. Um, that's cool. Attack, also costing one AP. If an enemy model is in range of the weapon the activating model is using, then roll a number of D10s equal to the weapon's attack's characteristic, uh, attempting to meet or exceed the attacking model's violence stat. So it's again, it's a sort of a standard roll off. You've got a, a, a number that you need to beat or exceed, uh, you need to exceed. 
Um, each roll that meets or exceeds a stat is deemed a hit. Each that does not is deemed a glance. That's right, because we have no, it's not hits and misses, it's, uh, it's hits and lesser hits. So that's cool, I like that. Um, each hit causes the target to suffer the higher damage of the weapon. So each hit causes the target to suffer the higher damage of the weapon, and any glances causes them to suffer the lower. So this will be expressed as damage X slash X of the weapon. So cool, okay, I like that. Of course, because there's hits and glances, um, so you can do, there's variable damage that can be done. Uh, the damage is added together and, and applied to the target with any amount the damage is added together and applied to the target with any armor the target has subtracting from the total damage that the attack action does down to a minimum of one. In addition, the attacker may push the target one inch in any direction if they rolled any successes. Nice, so you can push them off that ledge, cause them to fall. Um, nice, nice. And there's a good little example here as well. Having an axe with three attacks and a damage one slash three, the player will roll three dice. If they rolled two hits and a glance, they would do seven damage. Very nice, nice. Uh, rules here for picking up relics, which I, you know, I assume is for uh, objectives and, and mission rules. You can wait where the act, that where the model's activation ends. However, it may reactivate again later. Ah, nice. In the round, but has not regained any AP when doing so. So, okay, and another good example. And another good example. Uh, a minion with two AP activates and then takes the wait action for AP at cost one, their activation ends, but they activate, but they may activate again later in the round with one remaining AP. Okay, cool, nice, nice. So okay, cool. So there, you so some basic action, basic actions are there. Uh, terrain and line of sight. Most terrain in Necropolis, such as walls and solid objects, is deemed to block both movement and line of sight. If models cannot draw a line of sight to the target of their attack or spell action, then they cannot perform that action. Nice. Dangerous terrain and board edges. Spiked walls, curses, sigils, and other unnameable hazards all exist within the endless city, and all share the fact that you do not want to be pushed into them. If a model either moves, falls, or is, or is pushed into one of these pieces of terrain, their movement stops and they suffer three damage. Nice. Uh, in addition, the board edge is deemed to be dangerous terrain and acts as above. Nothing friendly exists out there in the darkness. Nice. Uh, we've got some good steps here about your gathering creation. Looks like your basic gathering starts with 300 obols. I'm not sure what an obol is. That's, uh, I'll have to look that one up. Uh, second step, choose a covenant or forsake one and be the wretched undead. Nice. Per uh, purchase a leader and minions and generate a lair. Deployment is 350 each for, for each battle. Deployment limit is a maximum value of, mo of models players can deploy for a game. The players may have any number of minions on their roster sheet and decide which to field in each scenario. Nice, okay, so yeah, so you're basically creating your little warband uh, and you're taking out different groups, different models for each mission. That's kind of cool. Uh, base sizes are just suggestions, you do you, as, we, as we've been told, that's good, I like that. Uh, below is an example of a gathering for reference, so sweet. So awesome, you know, you could, for instance, you could play with this gathering pre-made here if you wanted to. Um, I like it. I like. I think it would be a good um, maybe AI or something like that we could create. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, the warband is Hodrick's Hounds. The Covenant is the Wretched Undead, and the Lair is the Tainted Gatehouse. Nice, nice. Covenants. Covenants are the allegiance your gathering has in the Endless City. Each covenant comes with the cost of with the cost of model restrictions, but provides the bonus of an additional trait for your leader and a covenant specific single trait for a model of your choice. Okay, so yes, yeah, so that's that makes sense why you might choose to, um, you know, to forego a covenant um, and and be with the Wretched Undead. It sounds like you, you're losing traits there or second traits, but you have the option of, of taking any models you like. Um, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh, okay. Uh, alternatively, you can choose to ensure a covenant and be a wretched undead, gaining two traits for any models of your choice from the list below. Nice, okay. Sweet, sweet. Um, embalmed hands, scions of the rotting goddess. If you choose this covenant, your gathering may only contain models with the blood keyword. Your leader gains a following trait in any addition to others. Cool, cool. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these. There's so many. There's actually so many. Um, the rule book, I think it's 40 pages, 45 pages. Um, it's it's nuts. Um, 
So yeah, yeah, what's the, um, what's the next time? Okay, so it's the underlined ones. All right, cool. So yeah, yeah. so the next one is the Carnborn, faithful of the first Grand Lich. Uh, long before the age of the living ended, the first was already dead. It was the first who unlocked the secrets of necromancy. It was the first who subjugated empires, who amassed the knowledge of the of, of Lisk, who constructed the ceremonial plateau, who sunk a treacherous old marsh. To serve the first is to preach their histories and collect and return all knowledge lost in the ruins of the world. Very cool. Sweet. Uh, there, there, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a bunch here. There's a wretched undead, the lost. Um, yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. Again, more more lore. Big old, big old chunk of lore right there in the black box there. So purchasing a leader. So your leaders, you can choose your blood, blood, blood bone, or plasm as their keyword. Bone, the leader gains improve. The leader gains improve their violence by one. So you choose your blood, bone, or plasm as the leader's keyword. So for bone, the leader gains it. Uh, an improvement to their violence by one, e.g. a seven plus becomes a six plus. Um, blood, the leader gains plus two max HP, and plasm, the leader gains the fly keyword and minus two HP, and cannot wear heavy armor, okay. Obviously, plasm is more ghost or ethereal kind of uh, undead. Blood and bone are obviously the, uh, blood and bone, the, uh, the hulking, rotting corpses and skeletal monsters. Um, Nice. So then you can choose the following leader types. You got Lich, uh, Revenant. Lich or Revenant? Yeah, nice. Yeah. So a Lich cannot wear heavy armor or carry a shield. Um, they have an AP of two, a move of three, a violence of plus seven, and a range of plus seven. Um, so you can then you choose the following leader types. You've got the Lich. Uh, a miniature idea is a rotten necromancer, an ancient Lich, or a, fa a phantasmal sorcerer. They have the keyword Bloodbone, Plasm, and Leader. They have an AP of two, move of three, violence of seven plus, range of seven plus, 15 HP. Uh, but they cannot wear heavy armor or carry a shield. You've got the Revenant as well, uh, which is a mini your miniature ideas here, a, a desiccated knight, a barrow monarch, or a spectral martyr. An AP of two, move of three, violence of six plus, range seven, seven plus, and HP of 17. Very cool, very cool, cool. And then we've got um, our basic leader traits. Unyielding will, gain an extra plus two max HP. Combatant, improve violence by one. Uh, perceptive, improved range by one. Clarity, improved move by one. Uh, and so on. There's, uh, there's 10 of them, which is, which is very cool. Um, then there's a, a table to uh, create a name, which is, again, is another awesome thing uh, with these kind of games where you can really get to get attached to your to your models, to your leaders and stuff. So um, it's a D10 roll for first name section, first name alternative, title, and origin. That's very cool. I like that. Um, then we purchase our minions to fill out our warband. Uh, or our, sorry, our gathering. Um, starting with c corpse husks, um, miniature ideas, uh, preserved, a preserved acolyte, a golem of blood, or a shambling horror. Um, so it looks like these husks are sort of the the base of the troop, and then you equip weapons and, and skills and spells and stuff to them later on. Uh, skeletal husks, ghast husks, familiars, um, necromantic necromantic remnant, uh, all these all these different um, minion husks have different stats, uh, I guess, to uh, to sort of relate, you know, what they are. Um, which is very cool. Soul Link. If a familiar moves across or into base contact with a mana token, the gathering's leader receives an additional mana dice of the token's type. The token is then removed. Cool. Nice. I like that. Um, give us eyes. Any model in line of sight of the, of the familiar is considered to be in the line of sight. Oh. Any model in line of sight of the familiar is considered to also be in the, in the leader's line of sight. Spell and weapon ranges are still measured from the leader themselves when making attack or spell casting actions. That is cool. That's very cool. Um, small beasts, uh, miniature ideas, the remains of a wolf, a twisting massive bones, flying beast, a fell bat, a skeletal winged horror, or a large beast, a patchwork beast, a tide of six dozen skulls. That's very cool. And of course, gigantic horrors. Um, nice, nice. We move on to the equipment. 
uh, a whole bunch of different weapons, improvised one-handers, blades, axe, bludgeons, pole arms, one-handed pole arms and two-handed pole arms, great weapons, dual hand weapons, claws, fangs, and large claws. Um, each of them have you know, different attacks, different damage modifiers, different ranges, pole arms, of course, having that bit more range. Um, yeah, very cool. And special rules and costs as well. Some of them are free, like the improvised weapons. I guess you're just fighting with whatever's on the ground, right? Picking up rocks and bones and other sorts of things. Ranged weapons, slings, bows and crossbows, uh, and armor as well. Light armor, heavy armor, shields, and great shields. Ah, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. Nice. Um, and miscellaneous equipment as well. Throne weapons, items like rope hooks, banners, musical instruments. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this <laughs> musical instrument, that's cool. This model gains the following action. Toot toot. Uh, at AP cost one, choose a friendly model within six inches and not activate this turn. You may activate that model immediately after the activation of this model ends. That's that's good, that's big, that's big. Um, oh, we move into spell casting now, which, um, yeah, spell wars, there's so much here. There's so much here. I, I, honestly, I, oh, there's, so, there's just so much. Um, after deployment, which is detailed in scenario section below, each leader receives a mana dice of a type and amount equal to their mana points. Um, yes, we've, we've learned that, that's good. Um, casting, each spell has an AP cost, usually one, and a channel value. When using an action to spell cast, you may roll any amount of mana dice that you have and take the highest result. If no result is higher than the channeling value, you will, be, you will, use, the, you will use the left side numbers of any slash in the spell description. So it's, it's, it's your um, two, two uh, damage values, you're using the, the lower of the two. Um, if, any, if any dice match or exceed the channeling value of the spell, you will use the right side of the, of the slash number. Uh, mana dice are used this way are discarded for the remainder of the battle. Only mana dice that share a keyword blood, blood bone, plasm with the spell or may be used to cast that spell. Any mana dice can be used for the necromanty spell law. Nice, nice. Um, arcane Backlash. If any mana dice are the one, are a result of one, the spell completes as normal, then casting model suffers an Arcane Backlash. Um, for an Arcane Backlash, you will roll a d10. One, the caster explodes in a shower of iridescent embers. Um, wow, okay. So you not only does that caster die, but any models within three inches also suffer three damage. Far out, that's, 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 I like that. Uh, a result of two to three, an overload of mana throws the caster wildly about. Um, the opposing player may push the caster five inches in a straight line to touch any terrain feature or any other model they suffer three damage and stop. Any model they are pushed into uh, will also suffer three damage. Wow, nice. Number, uh, if they roll a five, the caster loses control of their body and malign forces spe and spells are cast without control. Um, very cool. And of course, yeah. Wow. Then we've got the spell laws. Um, necromancy, any, any mana dice may be used. You've got Vigor, Puppet, all these different spells, different AP costs, um, different channeling values, and uh, different effects. Wow, there's so much. Um, for the, there's the, the blood school, only blood mana dice may be used for a blood whip, a tide of vermin, or a congealed blast. Um, bone, teeth, bone spear, bone armor. So it seems like, um, yeah, okay. So some of these, so the blood, the blood special rule is definitely uh, more aggressive by the look of it. Um, bone seems to be uh, more of a, an, a defense, maybe possibly a defensive, like, you know, you've got bone armor and tireless command. Um, and plasm seems to be more sort of a situational, possibly like a um, you've got you've got like blink, so you may um, move with, within three inches. Um, so you can choose a friendly model within three inches in line of sight. Push that model three or five inches as if it had the fly keyword. Spectral pool, plasmic shield, and phantasm. Um, yeah, awesome. Ah, and then we move to the lairs. So you uh, roll them on the tables below to name your lair. Each leader begins with a lair. You may upgrade your lair during the campaign, but for now, it is a narrative tool to root your leader and their minions in the world. 
Um, wow, awesome. There's there's so much. The un, the Undying Tower, the Rookery of Gloom of the Gloam, the Hallowed. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's there's just yeah. There's so much. The Undying Fort. The Dusk Temple. Awesome. Scenarios. So just to decide which scenario play to play. Players first determine the environment. Determine the victory condition. If both players agree, roll on the Dread Omen table. If playing a campaign, declare ambitions. And then five, deploy your gatherings. Um, yeah, awesome. So there's different environments. The Endless City. The ruins of the city stretch out like a maze. Shadowed figures and arcane treasures lost in the twists of its ancient streets. Place two to three ruins if they can be scaled and jumped between, then this is optimal. Um, no, there's so much. So, so there's currently there's six different uh, environments here. Um, the Hintertomb's Labyrinth, the Eternal Autumn, the Great Wastes, the Undead Settlement, flat, the Flatwater Mire, and number seven, more to come. Make up your own folks. I love that. And it, that that's awesome. It's, um, it's something that'd be so much fun to create your own environment uh, and then share it in uh, the Necropolis Discord with, with everyone else or see what they've created and you know, try out a game on their on their environments and their tables. Um, got different victory conditions here, so you can pick them or you can pick one or roll, um, which is is awesome. The Relic Hunters, a book of ancient wine, a mo motive comfort. Uh, Relic Hunters, a book, an ancient wine, a motive comfort, all worth fighting for. Alternating, alternate placing two relic objectives per player plus one additional. Relics must be three inches apart and three inches from any board edge. The gathering carrying the most relics at the end of turn four wins. Very cool. And of course, you could, you can make up as many of these as you want as well. Um, more to come. This this is a living, a living rule book, a beta PDF. Um, so yeah, expect expect a lot. There's the, from what I've seen in the Discord community already, it's already amazing. So um, yeah. Dread Omens. If both players agree, you may roll on the Dread Omens table to add additional spice to the scenario. Uh, a magical storm. The battlefield is whipped by a terrifying gale, bringing swirling debris and magical thunder to bear on the gathering as they try to take over. Nice. We move on to ambitions. Ambitions are your leader's long-term goals. Only the ambitions are capable. Only the ambitions are capable of escaping death in the first place. And this drive is not diminished as the centuries roll. Ambitions are goals you pursue in addition to the victory conditions of the scenario. These are, these are the principal way to develop your warband over time. Each time you meet the conditions of the ambition check, check, each time you meet the conditions of the ambition, check the box on your gathering sheet. Once the goal number is reached, uh, you receive the reward in the after battle sequence detailed in the campaign section below. Awesome. Nice campaign. The after battle sequence. We so first you roll off uh, recon, reconstitution maladies if the leader was taken out of action. Receive victory rewards. Score ambitions and receive any rewards. Visit the bazaar. Roll a new scenario. A bazaar. Okay, that's very cool. That's very cool. Um, different victory rewards. Different reconstitution maladies. When your leader has been taken out of the action. When your leader has been taken out of action in a battle, roll the following table and apply the result to them. Frail Reformation. One, mi minus one max HP. Cursed Form. Your opponent chooses either your move, violence, or range and reduces it by one. Incomplete Form. Choose move, violence, or range and reduces it by one. And Perfect re Reconstitution plus one max HP. Nice. Victory Rewards. Minor Treasures. Um, you can receive a blade oil, which is a free action to dis you discard, then plus one to violence rolls for the rest of this bonus activation. Very cool. Nice. And the, then different ambitions, a bunch of ambitions in here. As we go through, we move to the bazaar. In the shadow of one of the many towers of powerful liches that dot the ruins of the endless city, small sediments of lesser necromancers and undead are to be found. Some ply a trade in buying and selling services of goods, their ambitions diminished or just taking a well-earned break of a few centuries. Each player may resolve each of the locations below. The markets, Soulbinder, 
Tomb Robber, Wayfinders, Pack Beasts and Seers, Alchemy Workshop. Ah, Cell Swords. Oh, there's so much. It's so good. <laughs> um, the uh, the Alchemy Workshop, for instance, you've got uh, different items. Thunderclap, effect. Make a range attack action, which is range six. Attacks one, damage one slash five. Additionally, every model within three inches of the target suffers one damage. Nice, nice, good splash attack there. Uh, different potions, mana bottle, free action, discard to gain a mana dice of any type. They, all these things have costs. The O balls, uh, mana bottle is ten. Um, you know, for a little one use thing to get an extra mana dice, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Um, the the blight blade, beast hunter, thirty O balls to add to roster, twenty O balls to deploy in a scenario. Nice. So you've got, um, yeah, you've got. Um, <sighs> What would you, you've got, what would you call them? <laughs> Mercenaries, I guess. Someone that you can hire. Um, contractors, <laughs> um, that's cool. Clad in armor of spikes and rings designed to break the claws of beasts and, and horrors. This hunter wields a boar, spe a boar spear dripping with the blighted alchemical con concoctions of their dark trade to destroy the stray undead beasts that plague the endless city's dark corners. Um, so you choose the keywords, blood, bone, or cell sword, two, two AP, three moves, plus six plus violence, six up ranged, and 10 HP with a blighted spear as its melee weapon. Oh, cool. Very cool. So there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of, um, of cell swords and mercenaries that you can hire as well for your, for your missions. Um, and there's, uh, some work in progress rules here. The labyrinth, which is solo and co-op play, um, following a lot, a large. Fo the following is largely work in progress, and I welcome any feedback from the playthroughs you do. Um, that's what makes these these games amazing. Is you've got, you know, a, a whole network of people play testing the game, um, finding things, and it's yeah, basically, basically, you know, trying to debug these kind of games, um, and and the fact that you can, you can pick up something like this, in the Discord, in their Discord for free um, and 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 you know and, and have a good afternoon or a good evening playing playing this kind of game is so awesome um, yeah yeah there's more narrative narrative missions um, first chamber a rotten den there's so much the last five pages are the the narrative sort of campaign there um, so that's awesome that's awesome yeah so that um, that's Necropolis. Uh, like I said, the, the rules are available in the Necropolis Discord, which I'll put a link to in the description of the video. Um, it's free. Have a look, check it out. Have a have a gaze through the rules. Um, it's, there's so much that I had to just, just keep on skipping through. Otherwise, we'd be here for hours reading everything. Um, for a game that's sort of in the state it is now, there's so much there, there's so much depth. Um, and the Discord is absolutely popping off. Everyone is up to something. Um, whether they're building tables, creating their warbands, um, or, or playing missions. Um, it's really, really awesome to see. So, I'll be getting stuck into it, I think. You might uh, be able to follow me on the channel here, creating a little warband and, and a board. Definitely, definitely going to start with a board, I think. Um, as far as my warband goes, I am... There's so many different ideas that are running through my mind at the moment. I just don't really know where to start. I feel like I really want to use some of the skeletons that I've got. I've got some Wargames Atlantic skeletons. So I might be able to arm those up and maybe keep bashing, create some kind of uh, some kind of awesome gathering there. That'd be sweet. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, as always, a massive thank you to our patrons. Without you guys, videos like this would be nearly impossible to do. Um, and uh, yeah, for as little as two bucks a month, you can just sign up and join the Patreon and get early access to videos like this uh, and some other cool rewards as well, like your name right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out hobbyhomies.com for links to all the stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, bro.